Hello and welcome. You're with IndiaPostLive.com, India's first live interactive web television. This is your platform where you can engage with us, interact with us, and uh, you can post us your comments, you can send us your posts, you can uh, send us your video comments, and of course, tweet us at, at the rate India Post Live and hashtag India Post Live. Well, the youngest recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, 17 year old Malala Yousafzai from Pakistan. However, strangely, celebratory voices in her own country have been muted. Not just the militants, but several people from even the middle class have not reacted very well to the announcement. Many have even said that she is a Western agent, that she faked uh, the attack on her, and that she is but a puppet in the hands of her father, Ziauddin Yusufzai. We at India Post Live, we are trying to understand why so many people in Pakistan love to hate Malala. Take a look. A day after Malala Yousafzai was declared one of the recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize, a faction of Pakistan Taliban, TTP Jamaat ul Ehrar, began an anti Malala propaganda on social media. Branding her anti Islam, the militant outfit threatened Malala and uploaded an anti Malala article and a video. Despite the fact that Malala has brought laurels to her nation, and liberals hail Malala as a symbol of pride for Pakistan, she has become a divisive figure in the country. A majority of conservatives allege she is working against Islam and Pakistan's sovereignty. Many in Pakistan believe that local and international media are unnecessarily creating hype around Malala, the young activist for girls' education. Right-wing parties in the South Asian nation claim that the campaign to promote Malala is proof that there is an international lobby behind the whole issue. Malala has been portrayed as a Western agent in Pakistan on a mission to bring shame to her country. In a country brimming with anti-West sentiments, anyone seen as a pro-West becomes a target for scorn, ridicule, hatred and even violence. The question India Post Live is asking today, why is Malala hated by many at home? All right, so why exactly is Malala not so popular in her own country? That is the question we are asking. I'm joined online by several distinguished uh, guests and it is my honor uh, and I'm very, very happy to uh, introduce them for all of you and we're going to, I'm sure we're going to have a very, very spirited discussion. Uh, firstly, I have uh, Kuwar Shahid who joins us from Lahore. He is web editor of The Nation. He is a blogger and a reporter. Hi, Kuwar. Welcome, Hello. welcome to India Post Live. Thank you so much. All right, let me introduce the others and then I do want to talk about the article that you wrote. Okay, we have uh, Yasir Latif Hamdani, a lawyer and a writer. He also joins us. Um, hi, Yasir. Welcome to India Post. Hi, hi. hi I'm good. How are you? Long time. <laughs> Seeing you after a long time. Okay, we have Rab Nawaz of Lahore. Rab Nawaz is the editor in uh, chief of the very, very popular blog and uh, Pakistan's first bilingual blog, Laltain.com. Hi. How are you, Rab Nawaz? Okay, I can't hear you, Rab Nawaz. You might have to unmute your mic. I cannot, I could not hear you. Sorry. Okay, uh, yeah. I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I can hear you now. Thanks so much. And wel welcome to India Post Live. I also have Sarah Peracha from Karachi. She is a digital activist and a writer. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to India Hi. Post Live. Great. Thank you. All right. And I also have Abdullah Nizamani from Karachi. He is a lawyer and a writer and a keen follower of uh, all the political events that are happening in Pakistan and wonderful insights we have got on our shows whenever uh, Abdullah is on the show with us. Hi, Abdullah. Welcome to India Post Live. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Okay. First, let me start with uh, Kuwar Shahid. And uh, Kuwar, I must congratulate you on that article. In fact, uh, I was reading what you wrote, and the first part of that article is something, you know, the, 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 where you talked of flipping the coin. And when I was reading that, I was so 
angry. My blood was boiling. I'm like, what on earth is he saying? <laughs> but then, you know, when there was something about flipping the coin that made me say, okay, let me let me just go ahead and finish the whole thing. So let me just bring that up on the screen for our uh, uh, audience, for our viewers. And this is what uh, he has, in fact, written in uh, when he started writing about Malala's uh, Nobel Prize. Coming up on your screen, just some excerpts from his article, uh, you know, why I hate Malala, a guest post. Here's a girl not old enough to have an ID, taking on Pakistan's biggest enemy without an iota of fear, she, uh, he writes. She takes a bullet to her head, not fighting for a jingoistic agenda, but for something as universally celebrated as education. For her commendable bravery, she gets global acclaim, speaks in front of a global audience at UN, meets Obama, and is pretty much the only positive coming out of this country in recent times. It seems to be more a tale. OK. Uh, now, after you, flipping the, after you flip the coin, here's a girl not old enough to have an ID, siding with Pakistan's biggest enemy to defame the nation without an iota of shame. She pretends to take a bullet to her head, helping the West propagate the jingoistic agenda under the garb of something as universally celebrated as education. For her commendable theatrics, she gets global acclaim, gets a chance to speak in front of UN, meets Obama, gets to act like the only positive thing coming out of this country in recent times. And after that, he writes, what is easier to believe? Okay, Kuvar Shahid, when I, wrote, uh, when I <laughs> read that, I was like, really? That's what you're going to write? And then when I read the rest of the piece, I was like, salute. Uh, wonderful, wonderfully written from from not just a journalist, but from a from a just a, a, a lay person, from a layman. Let's take a look at what uh, he ends the article with, part two of your article. That said, I hate Malala because then I don't have to look at myself in the mirror. I hate Malala because then I can keep my head buried in the sand. I hate Malala because then marrying my daughter off would be my sole responsibility towards her. I hate her because then I don't have to regret all those times my mother fed me with her own hands while my sister was busy washing the dishes. I hate Malala because it helps me sleep peacefully with my sense of superiority very much intact. Okay, this is only one of the pieces that have come out. There have been dozens and dozens. I have read many, but since you were coming on the show, I made it a point to kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, infographically talk about what you have written. Uh, what is your understanding? Why is this happening? Why do people in your country love to hate Malala? Let me take your opening comments. All right. So first of all, thank you for going through the entire article <laughs> because a lot of people haven't done that. Yeah. Um, basically, as I, I mentioned in the article, yeah. hating Malala is the most convenient choice because like, I, I mean, if you go throughout the history, uh, why are conspiracy theories easy to believe? Because they maintain an ideological status quo. They yeah. ensure that we don't have to uh, unlearn anything. Mm -hmm. And since we are a quintessentially patriarchal and misogynistic society, Malala's achievements defy everything that we've been taught throughout our lives. And it's extremely difficult to unlearn everything you've been taught since you were born. Okay. Okay, so is, is, is that it? Because see, I can understand, I can understand that, you know, she was shot in the head by Taliban insurgents because she spoke out against uh, them because they had closed down schools. I can understand their revulsion for her. But this sentiment is also coming from the middle class. And the reason that is coming is because while the middle class want their daughters to be educated, they don't want their country's problems to be highlighted outside. Yes, that's, that's, uh, that's absolutely true. But another fact that we need to realize is when Malala was attacked, yeah. October 2012 is is a time when Pakistan was still deciding whether the Taliban are our enemy or our friends. Okay. So, so 
I mean, supporting Malala would mean accepting the Taliban as our enemy. And the popular choice basically is to highlight the U.S. as our national enemy. So accepting, this is what I mentioned in the article as well, ex, ex, uh, accepting the flag bearers of your religion as your enemy isn't particularly easy, especially in our neck of the woods. All right, all right, great. Okay, the thanks for your perspective. Thanks for your opening comments. Let me now go across to uh, Sarah Piracha. Uh, she's a digital activist and writer. Hi, your opening comments. What are your thoughts on this entire controversy surrounding Malala? Uh, I firstly congratulate uh, Ms. Malala Yousafzai and Mr. Kalash on earning this uh, Nobel Prize. But uh, uh, sadly, my opinion is against. Uh, this Nobel. Um, I really don't uh, find any uh, that particular reason that why she got it. If we take an uh, example of Mr. Kerala, she's worth, working since long and for more than 44 countries children. Yeah. But still Malala hasn't done any single thing or effort till yet. If we take Pakistani government stand, uh, Pakistani government is paying 16,000 pounds per year for her education. Yeah. She can't uh, deny the fact that Pakistan government is not supporting it. Pakistan government is supporting her. Pakistan uh, army is supporting her. Everyone is supporting her. But the, uh, when, we, when it comes to Nobel Prize, understand this fact that uh, uh, we are not finding any um, such platform where she has worked work before. Well, uh, you don't uh, agree uh, that she, you don't agree that she is one of the youngest activists fighting for child's rights, a child's right for education. She is not fighting actually. She is not uh, doing anything like that. She okay. Is just speaking after the attack. Before that, she was writing as a blogger. And if we take uh, Pakistani blogger scene, that we will uh, find thousands and maybe hundreds of blogs running at that time. Yeah. So we can't be her only as the only part of Pakistan. Okay, all right. Thanks. Thanks for your comments. Let me bring in a blogger now. Let me bring in Rab Nawaz of Laltain, editor in chief of Laltain. Okay, uh, we, we just heard Sarah. She said that uh, she's not really done anything besides, you know, her own. After she got shot, she continued her studies abroad and she's not really done anything the way uh, Kailash uh, Satyarthi has. Uh, what are your uh, opening comments? Would you agree with that or do you think uh, Malala deserves this award? I, I absolutely don't agree with the uh, opinion that she doesn't deserve Nobel. Mm -hmm. Because uh, at the time when she wrote the blog, and she definitely wrote it because if you talk to her, if you, if you listen to all her interviews, and whatever has come up about Malala so far, yeah. it reinforces that confidence that she has written that blog for BBC. Now that was the time when there was no allowed to pass. People didn't know what's happening there. And it was definitely a risk. And the father knew and he asked her that whether she's ready to write or not. So taking that choice and that was like inviting people that that's what happened later on. That is the courage that very few people have have, have manifested in recent history especially with regard to Taliban and the clarity and even after she she, she wrote that blog uh, she was receiving death threats people were telling her and uh, her father and, and the whole family to leave Pakistan but obviously they didn't they right. took the risk they stood up they went there and the other campaign for the education so okay. that campaign itself it, it needs a lot of courage okay though she since he's not that older, he has not been given that much chance to do a lot. But the, whatever she has done so far is exceptional, not only in Pakistan, but all over the world. All right, all right. I, I really think he loved it. Okay, Rabnavaz, uh, 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 thank you so much. Those opening comments of yours. Okay, let me bring in uh, Yasser Latif Hamdani now. He's a lawyer and a writer. Uh, you know, uh, besides religious conservatism, opposition to female empowerment. I mean, these are the very, uh, you know, the reasons that are kind of in your face uh, when it comes to opposition for Malala. Uh, Sarah says that she hasn't really done much to deserve a prize as uh, of the kind as Nobel. What are your thoughts, uh, your opening comments uh, for me, Yasir? Uh, 
Yes, sure. Um, well, to be the issue here is essentially that we're looking at it wrong. Okay. I mean, let me let me just put it this way: that you've got um, there are fewer Pakistanis who hate Malala than say there are Indians who hate Arundhati Roy, for example. Okay. Okay. So, so that's you know that should put things in perspective because what I believe, what I I've seen is that Malala is as a daughter of Pakistan, as, as someone who's done the country proud. So I don't agree with the view that she received uh, negative. Um, I, I think it was an extraordinary opportunity for Pakistan and uh, the girls of Pakistan to emphasize what is really important for them, uh, you know, and that is education. And uh, as a father, I'm especially proud of Milan and her achievement. Uh, that said, this, this sentiment itself is not insignificant um, because what's happening is, well, well, let me just put it this way, all the various parties that have been involved in, uh, you know, sort of, uh, that are involved in, in politics, they all uh, congratulate. So in terms of popular vote, you know, sort of, uh, I, I do think that the sentiment would be that significant. But when you talk about this particular middle class sentiment, yeah. there are two essentially reasons for people to propose. One is just outright jealousy. I think a lot of people are just, you know, sort of, you know, this is jealousy uh, okay. because that girl has something which these people would not have done or would not have achieved. And this is extraordinary uh, in this world. But the other thing is that she also challenged some of the basic myths that. You know, the, the generation of Pakistani that grew up under Jenny's yeah, had come to accept as, as um, uh, internal to themselves. Uh, so, for example, you know, uh, she points out in the book that the founder of Pakistan was a Shia. You know, now that, that is something that a uh, great number of Sunni Pakistanis don't want to hear. Yes. You know? so that, that kind of thing. You know, just telling yeah. the truth, I think, has also got her, uh, you know, in the of fire. Right, right. Okay, Yasser. Uh, let me let me bring in Abdullah now. Uh, you know uh, what Yasser just said. I want to take take off from that. Her views on Jinnah, the way she idolizes uh, the, the founder of your country, the statements she has made about uh, Salman Rushdie's uh, uh, satanic verses, for instance, she has said that instead of uh, wanting to kill him, one must write books, uh, you know, to, to one must write and uh, oppose, uh, if, if, you know. So th these are things that have really been talked about and these are various, whatever she seems to be doing seems to be in the news. A 17-year-old girl from a small village who... Uh, you know, suffered and came out of an attack and all of that. But her winning the Nobel somehow, uh, you know, has created such a furor in all kinds of sense uh, in your country. So, uh, what are your thoughts, Abdullah? Uh, see, uh, Pakistanis as, uh, as a nation does not have uh, Manala. Very few uh, uh, belonging to right-wing uh, uh, religious parties hate Malala because a uh, few politicians uh, and uh, uh, media persons have infected the minds through TV and their articles that Malala is a Westernist who she has been planted by West yeah. to, uh, to achieve their targets. Hmm. Therefore, but uh, if you see Pakistanis as a nation, they, they love Malala and they hate. Okay. Now the public opinion is changing. Now people are hating uh, Taliban. They are right. loving Malala. All right. The services that Malala has done to Pakistan are commendable. The Nobel Prize done by Malala will be for Pakistan in the long run. And government of Pakistan has acknowledged the services of Malala and have awarded few awards to to her. I think what Malala has done to Pakistan has not been done even by the president of Prime Minister of Pakistan. Because uh, President of Pakistan or, or the Prime Minister of Pakistan, they they sort of need uh, uh, President Obama's uh, uh, prior permission to meet her. Yeah. While in Malala's case, President Obama showed his wish that, that I want to eat this young girl. And that was before uh, she earned the Nobel Prize. Right. Right. 
All right, all right. Let me bring in Meher Tarar now. Meher Tarar is a journalist and columnist and she joins us from Lahore. Thanks so much for joining us on India Post Live. Can you hear me? Hi. Meher Tarar, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I, I, okay, I think you'll have to speak a bit louder or, uh, okay, let me, let me, let me get your opening comments. Before that, let me just say that, you know, there is, there is someone who said that by championing the case of Malala, the West has tried to cover many of its human rights abuses, like killing and maiming scores of children and women in drone attacks in the tribal regions. So uh, th these are some of the sentiments that have come up. You, you have been uh, listening to the conversation for some time. Basically, the, the, the sentiment that she is a Western agent, that she's a puppet in the hands of her father, that she even faked uh, the attack on her by the Taliban insurgents. What are your thoughts on uh, this entire controversy surrounding uh, Malala that a lot of people in your country love to hate her? I think that for the years, no harshly, people do not hate Malala. People just there is. I I I believe this whole thing about hating Malala and now they can hurt the friend of the woman too. As we as we because it's now what has happened here is who was writing writing blog for for the BBC that it was her father who was writing it that she was writing it. It was her. It was her and I don't. I don't think wrong this point with pointing out the the ills of the uh, ills of the culture in which she was at that point in time. There was nothing wrong. I like uh, the wrong problem really from what the people from the Taliban were destroying. The Taliban was trying to impose the rule or not trying to take their own form of change, which was about. Uh, in help for people who are living there. So, uh, what happened is people always believe that she was fighting the father. I don't think that she was dangerous there. Even if it was her fate, it was it, but I think it was a good fight for the father, of course. Okay. They were, if you say they were doing it for, uh, for money, I just think it's good. She even implied that the father is very conservative. Where, where people don't forget, they don't let anything be that the revenge. The revenge is the most important emotion in anybody's life that you cannot have to be used by everything you other than other than the food that you store time to do. All right. After, after, after she was shot, there has been so much about what happened, what did she was shot, she was shot, she was shot. She was shot. And I just believe. The whole situation has been very strongly held by the authorities. There is no denying that the Taliban were Taliban were uh, people. There was there was no denying that the Taliban those dropping girls what she was what right 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 right. People take the Western from Western uh, what you want to word Western agenda or the Western plan. What is she trying to do? Yeah. She has to join up, has to become a singer, has to become a movie star. Okay. Still a young, she has a head cover. She has to do their and she has Right. Okay. Uh, uh, I think it's people, people don't really see any, any of the, any, anything that is happening out to see their effect. Meher, can I just interrupt you for, for a second? Uh, I, I got that. I just want to get uh, Kuwar Shahid's opinion on this, uh, you know. Uh, you know, uh, give me the angle of uh, PTI, uh, Tehreek e Insaf, and, you know, there, because a lot of the, the, the extreme right voices uh, that, that talk about the blemish uh, that she has shown to the world, the blemish of the country that she has shown to the world, a lot of the uh, uh, hate Malala tweets that have come out on social media are also a people who are uh, members of the PTI. Okay, Shahid, you have you need to unmute your mic first. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Right, uh, first of all, uh, fair, fair play to Ram because he has uh, congratulated Malala for her uh, for the Nobel Peace Prize. 
However, uh, can you hear me? Uh, it's, it's a bit, it's breaking. Uh, your first comment was uh, awesomely awesome, <laughs> but there seems to be some issue now. Okay, go, go ahead. Is it better now? It's better. Go ahead. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, let's refer to Imran Khan because he has congratulated Kunal for the Nobel Peace Prize. However, there's a difference between the official party voice and the way media fans are acting on social media. Because it's uh, basically PDA followers are a new. I'm not sure you can hear me right now. I can hear you. PTI followers are a new. Yeah, basically they are. They they have this. Could you could you please repeat your question because it's you know the voice going. My voice. I can hear myself. You can hear yourself. There's an echo happening. All right. We'll try and get the audio yeah. back. We'll try and get you back. Rabnavaz is smiling. Uh, let me get Rabnavaz yeah. and <laughs> find out what he has to say about the whole. I was asking about the uh, the the uh, Imran Khan's uh, party PTI. Uh, what 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 I do you it. think is the reason for their uh, standpoint, their viewpoint on Malala? I think that primarily it is the same class uh, that follows PTI and hates Malala. And why the same class? Like there are different aspects to it. One is the education, the kind of education, public sector education that they get, and the kind of opinion makers that they follow. And they are mostly uh, Urdu columnists. And here I want to say this thing that that I think is very important: uh, that the whole hate scene against Malala, about Malala, is, is because of a massive propaganda. Yeah. Uh, Pakistani state has been acting like a like like like, a, like an ideological state, and you know. Uh, doing massive propaganda on one issue or the other. Initially, the whole incident took place. The nation was like standing with Malala, and people were like praying for her health and for her, you know, uh, goodwill and everything. But yes. afterwards, after a few days, few days uh, when Urdu Pakistan started writing Malala and started spreading conspiracy theories, within days and weeks, public opinion shifted. Hmm. The same happened in case of uh, attack. Uh, in Atabad when Osama bin Laden was killed, and the again same happened uh, in case of Lal Masjid incident. So I will say that initial reaction in all these issues uh, by the general pe pe uh, public is, uh, you know, towards good, if I can put it that way. But uh, very soon there is some sort of propaganda coming from different sec uh, different uh, sectors, including you know, right wing Urdu uh, columnists. And uh, then mullahs, hmm. who are also still very influential, and that whole narrative of jamaat e islami that is prevailing. Okay. And you know, PTI is also called, and rightly so, good-looking jamaat e islami. So the narrative and the ideological foundation that they follow, and the opinion makers that they follow, and the kind of vision that they have, especially about uh, the West and the outside world, and and about human rights, about democracy, about liberalism, it's pretty much the same uh, as that of jamaat e islami. So I, I think that that. Is, Connects with uh, you know, uh, anti Malala uh, British, which okay. equally comes from the mullahs as well as from middle class educated people who follow PTI and other parties. Right, right. Thank you. That that was that was a uh, quite an uh, interesting perspective. Uh, uh, can I bring in uh, Yasser uh, now? Yasser Latif, can I bring in Yasser now, please? Yeah. Okay, Yasser, I just want to ask you: Do you think that uh, there are many supporters of Malala who feel that now she might be forced to live in exile? the way uh, even Abdul Salam, your other Nobel laureate was. Uh, do, do you fear that for Malala as well? Well, you know, the, the, uh, the issue happened <coughs> several different issues uh, between sort of uh, Dr. Abdul Salam, who uh, was one of the greatest physicists of the last century and obviously uh, a treasure for Pakistan, but uh, he was allowed to come back. He came, but then, you know, there were issues with his Know, sectarian affiliation and yes. declared non Muslim by uh, Zulfiqar the government. And so that was the issue there. Yeah, Here, it's an issue of security. Uh, Malala is going to feel insecure when she comes to Pakistan because she's going to be a target of the Taliban. Now, the only solution for that is for the government to step up and the government to actually uh, you know, provide security to its human rights defenders and human rights activists. Okay. Now, there, there's no other way of doing it. This has to be 
uh, a state's uh, sort of uh, state own responsibility has to take it upon itself to defend those who are its treasure, its assets. Um, uh, in terms of, of you know, I, I disagree with the fact that the Pakistani state has not uh, owned up to Malala. Pakistani state has. Yeah. Um, even the ISPR, which is the uh, you know, uh, spokesperson, uh, spokes organization <laughs> for uh, the Pakistan army, uh, had come out and congratulated Malala. Uh, and they were the ones who had gone, you know, sort of gotten her and saved, transported her. Now, you know, again, the, the more important question is where does this sentiment, which does exist, it's not a majority sentiment, but it is a significant sentiment. Where does it come from? I think it, where it comes from is this idea, uh, well, you know, I would say that uh, middle classes in general tend to be suspicious and uh, conspiracy, uh, you know, believe in conspiracy theories, but in Pakistan, with the kind of uh, um, sort of retrogressive educational, uh, you know, uh, kind of education that was instilled starting with General Zia, I think everything has been turned on its head. So we have the most radicalized class. Now you've got people like, uh, uh, you know, uh, people who would, would not strike you as Islamists or as Muslim, uh, you know, or, or fundamentalists. People who, are, you know, yeah. who listen to music or go to concerts. Some of them have also come out and posed uh, Lala because they see everything in that Western conspiracy. It's kind of, it plays into this whole thing where you have got now Imran Khan, for example, has come out and uh, congratulated Malala. But the, the the other night I was listening to him and he made up this uh, or he quoted this bogus uh, Macaulay quote, uh, which was you know uh, how a colonization was this great conspiracy against uh, India against uh, you know the subcontinent. Hmm. And you know that was a quote, by the way, which BJP had invented in India, uh, and he just took it off <laughs> them. So that mentality, that whole idea, that, that sort of middle class thing, which by the way, you guys also have, you know, you have to, uh, I, again, just to give you another stark example, I gave you the example of Arundhati Siddhoi, but just to give you another stark example, there are fewer Pakistanis who hate Malala than there are Indians who admire Nathuram Godse for what he did. You know, I am, you know, totally convinced that that is the case. All right, all right, so, yeah. all right. Interestingly put, Sarah. Can I, uh, uh, you know, uh, just ask your opinion on this? You first started by congratulating yes. both uh, Kailash Satyarthi and uh, Malala on winning the Nobel. Now, you know, in a, in a, in a time of conflict like this, uh, one Nobel Peace Prize from Pakistan, one from India. Do you see? How do you look at the large in the picture internationally? You think this was kind of a, a PR exercise, you know, for the region? That boss, we are giving two people the Nobel Peace Prize uh, from the, the you know the neighboring countries. How do you look at that? Uh, well, I think uh, they are more uh, seeking the terrible condition of Pakistan and India border, so they are uh, trying to put their effort to make a peace sign in between. <laughs> You think that is the uh, effort of the international community to bring peace between the two countries? I mean, is that what you're trying to say? Yes, yes. No, no any uh, further reason except <laughs> they, they, they want peace in between these two brotherhood countries. <laughs> All right. Whatever uh, the rest of the participants said, uh, that Malala, they are completely in favor of Malala, but uh, I don't. I still don't find any particular or brightest reason yet. I uh, see that when you, as I earlier said, the 16,000 pounds are being invested on uh, Malala. Uh, and Malala's education, if you take that uh, uh, amount, 26 crore rupees, into uh, the uh, education yeah. development of Savant girls, yeah. it would be a better idea than investing on someone who could afford it. So I don't find uh, any particular reason why she is not uh, giving it to uh, uh, why she is not giving it to those girls who need it the most. I really don't understand why people are creating too much hype for Malala. And still, we have another uh, not concerned girl, Rahman. Uh, she uh, raised her voice against U.S. drones. 
So uh, we uh, don't even remember her, but we remember Malala Yousafzai because she was brought by Taliban. So I think we need a balanced society more than. All right. I, I, think, I think Sarah Rabnavaz did respond to what you said, but now let me bring in Meher Tarar uh, once again. Last time I was kind of guessing uh, uh, what you were saying, but you know, we, we, we've just talked about the entire PTI factor. We've talked about the middle class and the conspiracy theories. We've talked about the, uh, you know, the basic emotions that are running in your country. Uh, do you have anything to add in terms of, you know, the question that I asked? Do you fear that Malala might have to be in exile after this? Uh, I'm just confused. I'm just surprised that nobody is talking about the reality, the reality of this whole thing uh, in, a, in, a, in a bigger way. This is not a, this is not a right wing thing. It's not what PTI is saying. It's not what the mullahs are saying. It's what normal, regular people from upper class, from, from girls and boys who go to posh schools are saying, I, right. want, to, I want you to you, I want to dispel this misconception that the mullahs and the clergy and the, and the, the guys in the turbans are up there. No. If you talk to, for instance, a grammar school girl, which is an, but to, uh, to a grammar school girl, which is an elite institution in Pakistan, they don't love, they don't like Malala. They think Malala is a fraud. They have, they have nothing good to say about her. And the only reason why they say that about her, about her is they don't know anything about her. They don't see her on Pakistan television. They don't see anything by anything that that she is doing on Pakistan television. Jealousy. They, they don't they don't watch her interviews. They, anything and everything that's related to Malala today is uh, uh, is in the is in the, uh, uh, in the international media. People she meets are all over the world. Uh, this, uh, 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 people she talks to are all over the world. The, but the book she has written uh, 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 has been co-authored by an international journalist. That is why this, this mistrust and hatred has, has, has sprung up. People don't, why would, why would anybody hate a girl who, who's doing something to promote education? Right. So here in, uh, every, everybody studies in Pakistan. Yes, there are, for instance, there was a girl, uh, there was a 20 year old uh, female working in our house and I asked her if she could read and she said, no, she said, my parents didn't send me to any school. They didn't send my brothers and they didn't send me. This is a, this is a matter of people not sending their children to their children to school. Yes. In Malala's own book, she has said that she knew and she thought that Taliban would never shoot a young girl. That's the, I was just reading her book. I can quote her exact words. She didn't think this was going to happen. Hmm. She was she was shot at, and then she was she was uh, uh, she was flown out of Pakistan. Now the only thing that has happened is Pakistanis feel that that uh, that they don't know anything about. They don't hate her. They don't. They don't know what she's doing. If, if for instance, the government of Pakistan sends her an invitation, invites her for a few days, why understand why the Pakistan government is not making any attempt, is not making any steps to invite Malala to Pakistan? Are right. they trying to say that they would not be able to provide security for a 17-year-old girl and her family members? I don't. I don't buy that. So one. There is no right-wing conspiracy against Malala. The whole thing was blown out of proportion by the educated people in Pakistan because they believe the drone issue had been signed, the sideline. Yes. All the kids who had been killed because of drone had been sidelined. And one girl who was shot by, which was a very, very unfortunate incident, one girl who was shot by the Taliban, and because the US is fighting and the West is fighting the Taliban, that issue was brought into, into the fore. That's about it. There's, there's nobody hates Malala. There are no gun plotting people roaming around waiting for Malala to come back home. Oh, you know, let's shoot her. She, she, she's still, still a nice, very sensible, very, very bright, decent looking Pakistani girl. Why would anybody hate her? What is she doing but, in the West? But she remains an enigma. Is she's that not what you're saying? saying things that are untrue. Everything she says about Pakistan is true. Yes, people may have a problem with the truth, but that doesn't mean that they hate her for that. All of us sitting here, Yasser, Kuldun, all of us write in newspapers and we write about subjects that, that are kind of taboo in Pakistan. Right. Yes, the people, just, uh, we get certain negative comments, uh, comments on, uh, on the internet, but that doesn't mean people think. So please get this thing out of your head that any, any time some Pakistanis start to talk about, about uh, an issue in Pakistan, there are people who are wanting to, uh, wanting to kill him or her. That's untrue. 
I right. don't agree. No, absolutely. So That's a wonderful that, perspective. Me, so I, I want to, but through you, I want to absolutely dispel this idea that it's the right wing who's after Malala. No, the educated class who's after Malala. Great. They don't trust her. They don't trust what she's doing. Right. So she continues to be. She continues to be an class. enigma. She continues to be an enigma by people who don't really know much about her and what she's doing, and she's not got that much of media coverage, uh, uh, you know, in, in your own country. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, thank you, uh, Meher. Before we continue, we have a video response from Amir Mughal, who is a, a defense analyst uh, in Pakistan, and uh, this is what he had to say uh, about Malala. Take a look. Uh, let's, for argument's sake, uh, we accept that Malala <coughs> is a foreign agent uh, and the critics who are saying this are producing her pictures with, alleged pictures with Richard Holbrook as an evidence that she is an agent. Then what about those pictures of Pakistani head of states with the US leadership since 1948 till date? If the picture is the criteria that she or he is, is an agent, then everybody is an agent. And what about the US aid? What about the defense aid? What about different type of uh, financial aid which Pakistan has been receiving from the West and the USA? If the grant or financial aid to Malala is a bribery, is a bribe, uh, to uh, to recruit her as an agent, then what about that financial aid Pakistan is receiving from USA in the West? All right. So what uh, Meher? I don't know if you heard what Amir Mughal said. Uh, he said that if if for argument's sake we consider that uh, she is a Western aid agent, what about the financial aid and the defense aid that is coming in from the United States to Pakistan? What would you call that? In that case, every every everyone in Pakistan is an agent. All right, that is what Amir Mughal had to say regarding the uh, you know the the hate factor. Okay, let me bring in uh, Kuvar Shahid now. Kuvar, uh, a very interesting point made by um, Meher Tarar. You know, she 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 talks of the educated elite who don't. You know, they don't know much about her and, you know, uh, what are your comments on what Meher said? A very interesting perspective we got, a very different perspective. Definitely. I think I think she's absolutely spot on. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's, a, it's not just the education. Uh, it's, it's not, again, it's, there's a problem with the, with the sound. I think uh, you can again hear yourself. <laughs> it's not just the conservative class and yeah. it's not just the educated class. Yeah. It's basically a combination of both of them. Right. Um, because it's not that they don't know who Malala is. I mean, the world knows who Malala is. They just don't want to, I mean, find out her true strength. They don't want to accept her because like, like, I, you know, like I mentioned earlier, accepting her as our true representative, accepting her as our you know, potentially our future leader basically challenges everything that we as a country believe in. And that is that is a challenge for both the the right wing and the educated class. And uh, so so just to say that it's, it's, it's a conspiracy of the right wing parties uh, that they, they basically don't want to see a woman, uh, you know, spreading, um, you know, enlightenment because Malala's fight is, is hmm. not just about girls education. It's also about secular education. Yes. And that, yes, her, her fight for secular education is what irked the Taliban and the right wing simultaneously. But it's it's the fact that it's the what aboutism, the what what aboutry of the educated class. Okay, fine. Uh, they basically say, fine, Malala was shot, but what about the drone victims? Yes. What about exactly. this? What about that? The what about that? I mean, the issues they highlight yes. are are pertinent. Yes. Hmm. But what has that got to do with Malala's achievement? Why belittle her achievements? Because I mean, a lot of a lot of the people highlight that maybe uh, Abdul Sattar Idi should win the Nobel Peace Prize for all his efforts. Yes, he's done a lot for humanity, and he's done a lot for for Pakistanis. But why are his achievements being used to belittle Malala? And again, the, using Idi's example is not something that you know the right wing parties are doing. It's the educated class, like like Mehr has mentioned. Yes. People who go to grammar schools, people who who have you know, PhDs, masters, they, they are educated people. So it, it is the popular opinion that they basically every single person in Pakistan, no matter what their ideological beliefs, no matter where 
they're, they're coming from right away. It's not just the middle class, it's not just the lower class, it's it's not just the upper class. Every single person, I mean, the majority of Pakistanis basically are looking for excuses to belittle Malala's achievement. All right, That's not all, true. all right, all right. Abdullah, That's let me true. let me get your uh, final uh, comments on that. We've been trying to I, really I, understand I, I, the entire issue of uh, uh, Abdullah. Can you hear me? Okay, I think we've lost his video. All right, uh, Rab Nawaz, let me go across to you now. Uh, you know, you've been you've been listening to this. Uh, many perspectives, many, uh, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, the mullahs or the, the right-wing uh, extremists, but it's also the educated class that is, you know. So, so what uh, Kuwar Shahid says is it is convenient, it is convenient to dislike or hate Malala because she uh, is, is, again, something that they country has been uh, brought up to believe uh, you know has the the, the men and uh, the people have been raised to believe she stands uh, you know she she comes from a different ideology what are your uh, final comments on this uh, entire issue of uh, you know this dislike for malala rabnawaz okay i can you hear me rabnawaz Yes, I can hear you now. You can hear me now? Okay. Um, I was asking for your final comments uh, after what uh, Kuwar Shahid has said and after what Meher said that it's not just a certain section of the people but even the educated uh, people, uh, even the, uh, uh, you know, people who've attended grammar schools who uh, just, you know, have this dislike for her. Your final yeah, comments. Well, I, I agree that it's uh, very general, it's pervasive, it's not just a particular right-wing segment right uh it, across board and it's like in, in middle class and upper middle class as well but the problem is i think to an extent it's uh it, it's because of the misogyny and and our attitude towards women and the idea that she's going to you know our leader our future pm or something like that so that aches us as uh Kumar has rightly said but i think at the same time it's it's, it's somewhat orchestrated it's not that much natural organic reaction of people towards malala that just you know happened initially it was different we must not ignore that that when malala was shot people were exactly. everybody was like praying for malala yes yes what happened afterwards it is it is the opinion making process in this country what sarah which is primarily said driven by urdu media Rabnavaz, and that let that right wing urdu media, Yes. Rabravas, can I just bring it, you know, can I just uh, mention what Sarah has been saying right from the beginning? In fact, she has kind of been the lone voice and she is against her winning uh, the Nobel. She said, you know, that the fact that she is getting her education abroad and so many in, 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 in Pakistani rupees, so many crores of rupees are being spent. Instead of that, with that money, so many women in Pakistan, so many girls in Pakistan, children in Pakistan could have got education. She, her problem is there. So what, what you said that, you know, initially when she was attacked, the entire Pakistan was praying for her. After that, what happened? Do you think the fact that she had to leave the country has alienated her from the people? Is that what you think? Uh, no, actually, before she left the country, the propaganda started pouring in. People started, and the, the whole conspiracy behind Malala, it came from jamaat islami I'm not saying that it, it's only jamaat islami and people like that who say that Malala is the issue. Uh, it's, it's very general, but the idea, now there are two kinds of people, there are two classes. One who are ignorant, as Meher has mentioned, yeah. and the other who are also victims of propaganda. And in the longer run, the ignorant ones also become the victim of the propaganda because they don't have their own independent opinion and they don't try to make it actually happen. Oh. And now since it's quite easy to criticize Malala, you know, and another point is, uh, Yasser said that government has owned her, I'll say not as well as it should. Quite, you know, few months ago, uh, our CM Punjab, Shabash Shri, he was tweeting pretty much against Malala. He was very critical of Malala. Okay. And after she got the Nobel Prize, he, he announced that they, they are going to build a university uh, uh, in her name. Now, the problem is the government has owned her just as a kind of token. They haven't done enough to kind of, you know, make up for, for the image that has been tarnished. And uh, the other influential classes who 
could have influenced public opinion and the pub and and and, and uh, the people and the leaders they have remained silent people like imran khan congratulating malala is, is just a token it's nothing hmm. so that image can be regained right and the problem is not that she left the country and left us alone and she's like you know having a good life blah. That, that's not the problem problem is people were already told that this this is how this whole thing happened hmm. what has afia sadiqi done for that matter why is the whole nation supporting afia sadiqi it's not that what somebody has done or no the problem is what people are told how they like internalize that propaganda and how they kind of fall prey to the to that extended sort of network of conspiracy theories and that is embedded into right. the misogyny and the and their ideology of the state that, that also suit uh but i can say the the powerful ones powerful ones it suits it suits yeah that that's politician. something that even even meher tarar yeah. is saying it just suits them to and and, and uh, even uh, kuwar uh, shahid said it suits them to do that okay let me bring in uh, for final comments i'll bring in sarah last because you know she has been she's the lone voice let me first bring in uh, yasir latif yasir uh, yeah. ignorance and victim of propaganda but she is she is a victim of ignorance and propaganda but i just think the problem the way we sort of put it that this is a pervasive problem it's not that pervasive it's just not true uh, my kids school uh, you know has been celebrating malala for few years now and uh, they have the murals of malala and stuff so, so this is not absolutely not true that all pakistanis everywhere are out to be little that's not true yeah. now the other thing is uh, the comment by sara about you know money we spend on malala's education what i think that is also not true in the sense that i think what the government has done has employed her father uh, as an attache somewhere in birmingham yeah. i think and He's that is how she yes. her education is funded so to say that somehow the government of pakistan is funding her education that's also you know it's not true um overall the situation is that you have had uh, over the years uh, a sentiment right uh, you know radicalization of the middle class and that is spearheaded by people like imran khan who have been sort of saying stuff which uh, often is totally contrary to reason for example this whole business of the drones this is absolute nonsense because you know the the drones have actually helped a lot of people live freely in those regions you know and and there is enough data and enough research on it to you know to suggest that actually drones have helped out uh, the people in waziristan and there are a lot of people from waziristan who support the drone attacks so the the problem the problem essentially is that there has been a narrative that has been built around uh, anti west Uh, right. anti us sentiment and that has been spearheaded by mr imran khan who you know is a very charismatic very popular propaganda leader propaganda that we yeah. and and so that is you know sort of where it is right. and that needs to be okay all right thanks i always believe in having the women uh, say uh, have the last word can i bring in meher tarar for her final comments before i bring I in sarah <laughs> what i want to say is that this is just been a very 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 badly managed Do you, do you think do you think that can be changed now no baba no because people for instance my son my 14 year old son was very happy she got the nobel award my 19 year old niece was not she said oh look at her she's so lucky you know i mean for uh, look at how much she has achieved what has she done as i be saying the only thing that has happened there is people don't know what she's doing people who like her or don't like her they have no idea what she thinks from time to time they watch her on some international forum talking about the cause of education they they don't really see any tangible results in pakistan which have come about simply because of what malala is doing they, i think this is just a case of miscommunication right. whoever whoever handling her uh, what should i say publicity or pr is doing it all wrong the her first uh, most important of uh, important audience could be pakistan incidentally pakistan is the only which is being ignored uh, and a lot of a lot of reasons why people think malala is being little is because pakistanis don't actually think or believe that malala is doing anything so, so i uh, as i've been saying it's not about malala it's about the perception that's that's around malala right 
Nobody, nobody is against the, against the teenager. Against her. People just think that she is doing anything. She has not done anything. She has deserved the award. All right. She has not done anything for, uh, for the cause of education. But I believe it is just a very suddenly managed thing. That's about it. There is no hate there. There, there, is no, there is no breaking of Malala. There is just ignorance about Malala. That's, right. That, that, that's about it. Right. All right. All right. Yeah, because Thanks. you can only think of people when you show them, for instance, in your own country. Why do you have to come to come such a thing? Because people don't see Malala's, Malala's, the effects of Malala's work in Pakistan. And that's why they say, oh, okay, what is she doing? She's doing it from our country. Right. I, I, I get it. All right, Meher. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Before uh, before I bring in Sarah, let's bring you some tweets that, uh, in fact, have been doing the rounds after her. She was uh, uh, Malala Yousafzai. Uh, you know, it was announced that she's the Nobel uh, Peace Prize recipient. Let's take a look at some of those tweets, and then I will bring in Sarah for her final comments. The tweets, as you can see on your screen, have been quite mixed. Education is the only solution. Sarah Jane Diaz says. Malala Yousafzai and Malala wins the Nobel is the hashtag. There could not be a more powerful response to the Taliban who tried to kill her, Mia Farrow. Positive comments there. Good job, Betty. You are better than a thousand violent sons. May Allah protect you. Pakistani daughter dares to glorify power of pen and book even after being shot for it by. Okay, terrorists and Malala wins Nobel. She stood up for her people when no one did, much deserved. Malala Yousafzai gets the Nobel. Maria Shakil. Dehshat Gardon ko kojo ya kejo yar hai, gaddar hai, gaddar hai. Okay, says Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. Standing against authority is not easy. Malala did it, gave hope for all those who struggled to get education. Okay, these are all the positive tweets that have come in after it was announced that she has won the Nobel Prize. All I want is education and I'm afraid of no one. Okay, that is what she has in fact been fighting for, though Sarah will probably disagree. <laughs> Sarah, final comments from you. After everything that you've heard from uh, Kuvar, Shahid, from uh, Abdullah, from uh, Rab Nawaz, Yasir Latif, Meher Tarar, what do you finally have to say? Have you changed your mind? Do you think that Malala is not somebody who hasn't done anything, but she has probably given an international voice for education, secular education it's in the country? Not, it's not about uh, only my mind that I could uh, change. It's about the 70% of population, which is consist of youth, and they are not uh, able to relate with her in this context that uh, she got the Nobel Prize. Uh, uh, let me clear one thing that uh, she is only a person who got shot by Taliban. Uh, we were you stick uh, to your uh, point. Pakistan You're holding your ground. Yes, Pakistan was burning at that time with uh, so suicide bomb attacks and other uh, efforts of Taliban. We cannot uh, uh, raise her voice on uh, above all those that uh, things. I think it's a Hessian act. Uh, of all right. all right, so Sarah is holding her ground. She says that all she did was get shot. Uh, and, and despite what everything everyone else have had to say, she holds her ground that Malala probably does not uh, deserve the Nobel Prize. All right, this debate, of course, can go on and on and on for hours. But on India Post Live, I must uh, wrap up the show, uh, the live show. But I would request all of you to please keep the conversation going through your tweets, your posts, your video comments, uh, like we got one from uh, Amir Mughal. Uh, all of you, if you have anything more to add, please uh, send in your video comments. I have to wrap up the show now. But I would like to thank all of you. Meher Tarar, great having you. Thank you so much for that perspective. Um, uh, uh, wonderful to have you as always on India Post Live. Yasir Latif, thank you so much. Rabnavaz, Laltain.com, always a pleasure to have you. Abdullah. Wait a second. Sorry? All right, all right. I thought somebody said something. Okay, uh, you know, uh, I, I must wrap up the show. Abdullah, thank you so much for your, um, uh, for your perspective. It was great having you. And uh, Kuvar Shahid, keep writing, uh, keep. Uh, scaring us and then putting our minds at ease at the end of your article. 
<laughs> as you did now. Thank you so much. It was great having you on the show. Uh, I would like to invite you again to write, uh, you know, your video response to what you thought of the show uh, on this show uh, of uh, India Post Live. Great having you. All of you, thank you so much for joining us. And for all those of you who saw the show, please send us your tweets your video responses and your posts on this very, very contentious issue of uh, why there are so many people from all strata of society in Pakistan who love to hate Malala. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.